Okay, let's pick back up part two. Continue watching this Tim Pool video. I have literally just done that. Not that he's a puppet, but that I think he's going to compromise on things I, I don't want to see compromise. I'm sorry, man. You can't compromise on everything. I certainly believe in police reform. I don't believe in abolishing the police. I'm not going to compromise on that. What's the compromise there? Defund the police? Maybe. Maybe demilitarize in many ways. And that's why I'm in favor of reform. But I'm worried that with the Democratic Party, they're going to give way too much. They're not particularly strong. They say only 17% of registered voters perceive the former vice president as more liberal than most Democrats, according to a Politico Morning Consult survey, while nearly two thirds see him as in line with, with, uh, in line with or more conservative than the party at large. But that's true. That doesn't mean he's not a puppet of the far left. It means that Joe Biden is widely seen as a more centrist Democratic candidate, not a progressive candidate. But it doesn't matter what, what Donald Trump is trying to brand him as. This is what's really funny. It's, it's a matter of fact. 538 says it. The pandemic has pushed Biden to the left. How far will he go? <laughs> I don't know. But it's funny that they say in the, in, the late, in, the, in the newest piece from Politico about this, that Trump is trying to brand Joe Biden as a puppet of the far left. But 538 said in May that Joe Biden was moving far left. He certainly is. Joe Biden called for a moratorium on, on deportations. And I'm not sure if Biden went this far, but I believe the Democrats all said they want to decriminalize border crossings. I mean, that's weird far left ideological stuff. Strangely, Bernie Sanders used to call it a far right position. So I guess Bernie Sanders is far right now that he supports it. I honestly have no idea. But there's more in this vein. Check it out. When we talk about where we go with the far left defunding police and all these things, we start to get real tangible results that, in my opinion, are not things the American people want. I want to be fair and, and completely forthright. Joe Biden has and the Democratic Party have said no to defunding the police. But if they are going to move far left and they are going to compromise with the far left and bring on a potential far left VP, then we can see that some of these ideas will persist and will enter into mainstream America. What does that mean? New York City has now seen more than 500 shootings in 2020, a city run by a progressive Democrat in a state run by Democrats in which the city... This is where it just gets really disgusting. So he even states that Joe Biden has said he doesn't agree with defunding the police and he's not really far left on a lot of these issues. But then he goes and says, and fear mongers with, oh, look what could happen. Joe Biden is going to, he's going to capitulate to the far left and give them this and that. And we're going to turn in to New York City, which has had 500 shootings in 2020 alone because it's ran by Democrats. What? This is just blatant fear-mongering. Even though, he, after the fact that he states that Joe Biden has said, I don't believe in defunding the police. I think it goes too far to remove the founding statues. Um, he, again, was the candidate, if you wanted the candidate who was more likely to capitulate to the far left and do some of these things. That would have been Bernie, right? But Biden crushed him in all of the, in the primary. And it's just, it's just fear-mongering. It's just Biden has said he's not going to do these things, but he could do these things. And if he does do these things, oh, you better watch out. They're coming for you. Please. He just... Re reassigned 600 police from their anti-crime unit due to calls for defunding the police. A city where the, the state attorney said they would not prosecute protesters who were out protesting for Black Lives Matter, morality policing. Yet at the same time, we see in California, churches aren't allowed, they're not even allowed to sing. In, in New York, they're telling you churches at minimal capacity, but they let some people off people. Hey, so this is a brand new high-tech way to instantly cool down any room in your home, no matter how hot it is outside, even if you have zero AC in your home right now. now. Off the hook. What happens? When the police are demoralized, their budgets have just been slashed, you will see crime skyrocket. Check out this story. New York City crime stats show spike in burglaries and murders so far this year from June 16th, just a couple of weeks ago. Why is this happening? 
They say that, uh, what is this? Murders are up 25%. If you talk to the progressives, they'll tell you it's a conspiracy. You see, the police are desperately trying to make sure that people... What does any of this have to do with Joe Biden? It has zero to do with Joe Biden. Because again, he has stated that he's not for these things. And you're just assuming that he's going to fall in line and be for these things, even though this portion of the left is a minority. If you get off social media, you'll realize that. Even though the candidate that would be more likely to do these things got destroyed in the primaries in Bernie Sanders. I mean, what's, what are we doing here? What is he doing? It's just, it's, it's all it is is fear mongering. He's trying to frighten you into you have to go out and vote for Trump because if you don't, Biden is going to completely give everything to the far left anarchists and our cities are going to fall into ruin and crime is going to skyrocket and the police won't work. And please stop. Please stop. People want them to have their jobs. They want to make sure everybody knows why they need the NYPD to channel my good V for Vendetta, Chancellor Sutler there. I don't believe it. I think the reality is the police are demoralized. They're scared to do certain things because of the widespread protests. Their budgets have been slashed and 600 cops have been reassigned. You can argue that because of the protests, the police are refusing to do work, but that's an issue of demoralization. I'm totally on board with reform. And I think a lot of cops who are against it, yeah, well, too bad. Reform is fine. But reform is something simple like, you know, cops have, have a first response, you know, a, a procedure, a, a policy procedure of the first people who go out will be community officers, depending on the, on, on the severity of the call. That if somebody calls 911 for a mental health issue, then NYPD's community response team shows up. I believe these, these officers are armed, but it's very different from, say, a cop, you know, your standard beat cop. It's, all, it's, all, it's about scale and, and progression. Some people have talked about sending out social workers. I've seen conservatives very critical of this, arguing that, you know, social workers will just end up getting hurt or whatever. But I, I think that's, to an extent, moderately unfair. The reality is, if you call someone because there's a homeless guy who is like refusing to move from a doorway, then you can have a social worker come out. That really does make sense. These are simple reforms that I think can make sense. Unfortunately, that's not what the far left is calling for. And the vocal minority or whatever, that's, that's actually going to gain, uh, gain position among the Democrats, they want to abolish the police outright. When they slashed the NYPD budget by a billion dollars, AOC said, no, when we say defund, we mean defund. This is again where just more fear mongering gets crazy. You really think the majority of Americans on the left want to abolish the police? You really think when push comes to shove that calls for abolishing the police are going to be a hallmark of the Democratic platform? This is just asinine. And reform is one thing, but the main thing we need when it comes to policing this country is we need to crush police unions and their ability to collectively bargain. Okay, that's what needs to happen. I have video going over this and what I think would be uh, a good start to changing the way policing is done in this country and to hold them more accountable. And you'll see it pop up somewhere here on the top of this video if you want to watch that one. That's what really needs to be done. But spare me the whole the left is going to agree to abolish the police type thing. Fund. My question is, just tell us what you want. Why are you playing word games with us? Regardless of what's happening, the far left and the riots and the violence has resulted in more crime. That's just, it's just fair to say across the board to look at Chicago. Murders and shootings are up. Overall crime, overall crime is down. So that's, that's pretty good that crime is down. But murders and shootings are up. And that's likely due to the fact, well, that police are demoralized, as I stated. Moving on, however. I wanted to highlight this uh, thread from Jack Murphy, who talks about the problems of riots. And and then here's another one where he's just, you know, correlation doesn't equal causation. Could it be that morale is down and that's why these crimes are going up? Could be. 
doesn't have to be. And in such a small time span with very limited data to go off of, it's very hard to say that that's what it is. We have no idea what it could be. Why I think pandering to the far left is dangerous. Jack tweeted this thread in May, May 29th, before the riots actually hit D.C. He said, riots burned D.C. in 1968. It took 40 years for the city to recover, and in some ways it never did. Some of the burned out areas had crumbling buildings and vacancies for decades. Tens of thousands of people left town never to return. The city was literally gutted. What happens when a city is gutted? Those with means leave. Those without remain. Crime, drugs, and despair move in. In D.C., the entire middle class left town, black and white. All that remained were mostly poor blacks and a few rich whites. Both were cloistered and isolated. The tax base erodes. Services decline. Lawlessness fills the air. Streets become borders between the haves and have-nots. Segregation increases. Conflict rises. Anger intensifies. Things get so bad that folks just abandon their properties. Those who stay bar their doors. He goes on to say the big difference is that today, coronavirus had already caused a lot of damage and incentivized people to leave. But he says that the riots are coming. And when they do, the city will be damaged and will likely not recover for decades, thus creating more problems. And he's right. I believe he's right. So think about what compromise of the far left gets you. They keep saying the riots worked. They didn't work. They made everything worse and people died. Is that what Joe Biden seeks to compromise with? Certainly not everybody associated with the progressive left is for violence, but they certainly excuse it to varying degrees. Where were the complaints about Frederick Douglass's statue being torn down? I just don't know. Enough is enough. Atlanta mayor calls for violence to end after child is killed. It took this long for Atlanta to finally move in and shut down this, this occupied space in Atlanta. These protesters have been violent. They're not even pro- I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what you call them, but the violence has gone on for so long. Why won't they stop it? Why are murders and shootings going up? Why in Atlanta did a little girl have to lose her life? Why in Chaz in Seattle did a 16-year-old lose his What does any of this have to do with Joe Biden? What does any of this have to do with Joe Biden? The title of his video is Biden. Biden's call to transform America should worry you. Democrats are aligning with far-left fanatics. None of this has to do with Joe Biden. We actually know that Joe Biden has come out and in opposition to some of these things. None of this has to do with Joe Biden. It's just Tim Pool fear mongering is all this is. Now, some of what he's stating in these cities and what's going on is true, and I disagree with it. And you know, the the mayors and the governors definitely have some culpability in it, but it has nothing to do with Joe Biden. <laughs> Zero to do with Joe Biden. His life. What are they doing? Is that what Joe Biden seeks to 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 compromise with? And I bring it back to the main point. If Joe Biden is talking about transform, would he unintentionally bring about this kind of transform? That's not the transform we want. Again, you could say that right now Trump is president and they try to argue that. But Trump is in charge of the federal government and, and Joe Biden would be as well. What Trump can do pertains to federal jurisdiction, meaning if people cross state lines or if they're on federal property. This is the mayor of Seattle, of New York, of Atlanta, the Democratic Party that has not gotten a handle on the far left. It's not conservatives. It's not Trump supporters who are coming out and doing this. So what do you think you get when Joe Biden begins to compromise with them? You get statues of Frederick Douglass removed, this time by crane, not by rope. This time the city comes in and says, we will tear down heroes of liberty and freedom. And that's what they've been doing, man. I'm not, I, I can't sit here and just pretend that the, the, the Democratic Party isn't party to the same ideology. They'll say, hey, you vote for us and we'll help you with this stuff. It's a compromise, right? Well, there, there, there are worse things, abolitionists being torn down, but this is probably the weirdest You want to talk about a transformation. Let's talk about what the transformation is right now. Everyday words and phrases that have racist connotations, says CNN. Master bedrooms, blacklists and whitelists in computing. This is insane. They're just phrases. 
people like to make things up. They like to make up the history of weird words. This is insane. And people do like to make things up. Like you're making up the fact that Joe Biden signs off on any of this. The, it is insane. But again, Joe Biden has not said that he puts his name on any of this. You are making this up. You are saying, listen, Joe hasn't said any of this stuff, but this is what I think he's going to do. Even based on zero evidence that Joe has said that that's what he's going to do. You are turning the boogeyman of the far left into a huge conglomerate that's going to take over the Democratic Party and Joe Biden, when elected, is going to become Stalin. That's all I can take of this video. We've made it, what, two-thirds of the way through. I will not subject you to any more. I can't subject myself to any more. Uh, I will put the link to this video, though, in the description below in case you want to, uh, you're a glutton for punishment or something like that. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, upvote, downvote, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Thank <laughs> you.